So today it's a rather short passage. I'll be reading from Exodus 5, verses 22 to chapter 6, verse 9. But before we begin to read, um, let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, thank you for gathering us all here as one body, that we may come to worship you, honor your word, and exalt your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, who had paid the ultimate penalty for our sake, Lord, out of his, to show his love and his mercy to us, Lord. Please pour your powerful Holy Spirit upon your messenger today, Frank Holman, Lord, and, in, and open our hearts so we may see and hear, Lord. Lord, thank you for all that you have given us and provided, and, and thank you for a, a, a beautiful Wednesday that we've come and worship you and, and uh, with a humble heart. Lord, thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, verse 22, I'll begin. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he will send them out. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his, out of his land. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Moreover, have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out of from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. Now the message by Frank Holman. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for coming out on Wednesday. And like you said, it is a beautiful Wednesday. Thank God for it. The title of today's message is How to Respond to Challenges. And it comes from Exodus 5, 22 through 6, 9. And our key verse today is verse 22a. Let's all read this one together. Let's go. Then Moses turned to the Lord. Pretty short one, so... Maybe one we can memorize, too. I have a question for you guys. I'm curious, actually, what uh, the response to this is going to be. So raise your hand if you think life is easy. OK, that's what I thought it was going to be. So life is challenging, right? But how we respond to these challenges, how we react, it makes all the difference makes a difference to us, and it makes a difference to God, too. 
So today we're going to learn about how to respond to life's challenges. So let's pray together. Uh, dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the gift of life. And we thank you so much for the gift of this ministry and your son, Jesus Christ, and this Wednesday worship service where we could come before you. Please, Lord, bless this time. Help me to only speak the words that you want me to speak. Help us, Lord, to understand today's passage and to learn how to respond to life's challenges. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So there's three players we're going to talk about in today's passage. We're going to talk about Pharaoh, we're going to talk about Moses, and then we're going to talk about the, the Israelites. And we're going to look at three different areas related to these people, too. We're going to look at the challenge that they face. We're going to look at their relationship with God. And then we're going to look at their response. So it's their response we're going to look at. And then we're going to look at God's response. So if you remember from last week in Paul Lim's message, William uh, questioned at the end in the closing announcements, like, why does the passage broken up like this, right? So it's kind of like a cliffhanger. They're presented with these, uh, the, these challenges in last week's passage, and today we see the response. So we're going to jump back into the last passage a little bit so that we could remind ourselves what uh, the challenge exactly is and then what their relationship is with God, and then we'll jump into today's passage to see like what the, re the response is. So let's talk about uh, Pharaoh first. Um, it took me kind of a long time to find a picture that I thought was fitting of Pharaoh, but I found this one. Right? He looks like a pretty, a pretty bad dude, right? So we're going to talk about him first. So again, in that order, the challenge, the relationship with God, and then the response. So let's read uh, Exodus 5.1 together. Let's go. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Okay, so there's, there's a lot on the line for Pharaoh here, right? He's being asked to let the Israelites, uh, let, let the Israelites go. It's kind of like, uh, like a fissure could start to happen in his real uh, like dominance that he has over the Israelites. By letting them go to worship, he's caving a little bit. Then he's exposing like a, a weakness. He could potentially cave a little bit more, a little bit more. And I started to think about this. So I was like, okay, so what are the Israelites actually building here. Does anybody remember? It's in actually like in the beginning of, of Exodus. So in my mind, I always think, um, has anybody seen that Moses cartoon movie? Yeah, it's good, right? The songs are really good. So in, in my mind, I always think like, okay, they're building these, you know, giant pyramids, right? But like, if you go back in five, uh, or in Exodus one, it says, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with slavery or to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, right? So I was like, okay, what are, what are store cities? Like when I think about it, I'm like, okay, in my mind a store city is like the city of commerce, with like the citadel, and they have these, this mall, right? And I was like, no, that can't be it. So the store cities are like these, these military outposts, right? And they, they store their, their weapons and things like that. So it's important for Pharaoh because this is used to expand the kingdom. And this is used to protect at the same time. And this is his job, right? His job as the leader is to protect the people and grow the kingdom. So this is what's at stake for him. It's a big challenge, right? If he cracks, then all this stuff is at, is at stake. So that's his challenge. Now let's look at his relationship with God. Again, like I said, we'll flip back to the previous passage and then jump into the one we're talking about. Let's read 5-2 together. Let's go. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. So how he responds has a lot to do with his relationship with God. 
his uh, response, it's, it's pretty blunt, right? He says, I don't know the Lord. He's like, I don't know the Lord. Who cares about the Lord? You know, this is like a very, when you think about it, I'm like, it hurts my heart a little bit, actually, you know, like how, how blunt he is about this. And today there's also a lot of people that are in, like in this, they're the same way, right? They don't know God and they don't want to hear his voice. And so what are they going to do? They're going to do as, as they will. But what they need is they need to hear Jesus' voice. But Pharaoh, he's, he's not willing to hear God's voice. So he's going to do his own thing in his own way to protect his own self-interests. So let's see how he responds. Let's read 7 and 8 responsibly. I'll go first. You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Okay, so we remember this from, uh, from last week's message, right? So the Egyptians aren't going to be bringing them straw, straw anymore. And this means they have to start a new job before they even do their current job. Start new work before they even do new, do new work. So it means more pressure, more beatings, more hopelessness for the Israelites. And this is what Pharaoh turns to without God, essentially. His reliance on his self results in a completely self-centered response to this challenge that he has in his life. Now we're in today's passage, so let's look at God's response to how Pharaoh responded. Let's read 6-1 together. Let's go. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of the land. So we can see he's in opposition to God's will. He's really working against God. They're not aligned. He wants to keep Israel in slavery, but God wants to deliver them. So Pharaoh, in summary, his challenge is to free them or not free them, to let them go worship. His relationship with God, in summary, I don't know the Lord. And his response is to rely on himself. He's harsh, and then he's in opposition to God. Now let's talk about the Israelites. I have to go back to this real quick. The, when I was trying to find a picture for just the Israelites, the stuff that comes up is just absolutely wild. It was like Israel, Israelite wet, wedding in Haiti, like before I could just find like a very, very simple picture of the Israelites. But I think this picture captures it pretty good. You know, they're, they're in bondage, they're making these bricks, and things are going pretty bad. So this verse uh, we just read, but let's read it again to set the stage for the Israelites. So let's read 7 and 8 responsibly one more time. I'll go first. You should no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. So they're basically given this hopeless task. They have to do something that's almost impossible, and when they fail, they're going to get beaten for it. So their challenge is, is like an impossible double work assignment that they're not going to be able to complete, and then afterward they're going to get beat up for it. And they have another challenge also, like in this situation, it's to, I think their challenge here is to not give up on life. And for the time being, it looks like their life of slavery just got worse. Now let's talk about uh, their relationship with God. This is, this is interesting. Uh, let's read 5.1. We could talk about these one, one by one. Let's read 5.1 first. Let's go. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the, in the wilderness. So they want to hold a feast to the Lord so we can 
learn that they at least have the desire to worship, right? Again, we're talking about their relationship with God. They have the desire to worship from this verse. We can get that in 5.1. Now let's talk about 5.8. Let's read this one together. Let's go. Therefore they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to God. So they want to offer sacrifice. So we can learn from this verse that they believe that God is worthy of an offering. And this next one we talked about in the last passage, and uh, Paul Lim brought this uh, brought a lot of context to this, and it's it's interesting. Let's read five fifteen together. Let's go. Then the foreman of the people of Israel came to Pharaoh. Why do you treat your servants like this? So. Uh, does anybody remember that talking about this verse from last week, like kind of what the context was around it? You could raise your hand. Paul M., you should remember. <laughs> so they, ha- they have a problem, right? But who do they turn to? They turn to Pharaoh, right? They turn to Pharaoh. Yes, you know, there's these other verses, but they're, they're conflicted in what, in what they're how they're going about trying to solve their problem. Part God, part Pharaoh, right? Now let's read uh, 6, 5 for a little bit more context. Let's go. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. So they're groaning about, uh, groaning uh, to God about their situation, and God has heard them. So altogether, you know, if we combine these verses, we can see that they're kind of conflicted, right? They believe God is worthy of their worship, but when they need help for something, then they turn to Pharaoh. So there we got Pharaoh on one far side. We got the Israelites kind of in in the middle, and we're going to talk about Moses next. But first, let's look at uh, the response here from the Israelites. So this is God's response. Let's read Exodus 6, 6 through 8 responsibly, and I'll go first. Uh, Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will bring you into the land that I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. So what, what more, honestly, could they want than this exact message? I'll, I'll bring you out of your burden. I'll deliver you from slavery. I'll redeem you. I'll take you to be my people. I will be your God. I will bring you into the promised land. I will give it to you for possession, right? How similar is this to the promise that we have today in Christ Jesus? I'll bring you out of your burden. I'll deliver you from slavery. I'll redeem you. I'll take you to be my people. I will be your God. I will bring you into the promised land. I will give it to you for possession. It's so many people, they're like the Israelites in their response. Let's see what it is. Let's read verse 9 together. Let's go. Moses spoke to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So they're kind of indifferent about it, right? They hear almost exactly like the message that you, could, you can dream of. They're kind of like, yeah, okay, Moses. We see how things are going already. You made us stink in the eye of Pharaoh. And whatever you say, man. So it says that they're indifferent because their spirit had been broken. And I think in part, that's why they turned to Pharaoh for help instead of relying on God. In summary, for the Israelites, their challenge is being in this slavery, 
their relationship with God is they cry out to God, but they also cry out to Pharaoh. The response is that God hears them, and then their response is that they're indifferent. Now let's look at Moses. Let's read these responsibly too. I'll go first. So it's going to skip. We're going to read 5 1, then we're going to jump to 20 and 21. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. So Moses' challenge is twofold, right? So it's with Pharaoh, and then it's with the people. His challenge up against Pharaoh is obviously like, yo, let the people go. And then, and then when that happens and things don't go over so well and they have to make uh, even more bricks without having any straw, then the people blame Moses. So now he's like, okay, you know, like, obviously things aren't going that well with Pharaoh. Things aren't going that well with, like, the people. And his things are weighing on him pretty heavy, right? This is a pretty cool verse, I think. Let's read 5-3 together. Let's go. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. So this is the, this is the verse where we're getting his relationship with God, right? So how much closer could you have a relationship with God? He's basically saying, like, uh, me and God just wrapped up a meeting together, right? So we can say, like, that his, his relationship with God is, this is talking about him and Aaron, that they have a very, very close personal relationship. And then this is going to have a big impact on how things unfold for Moses. Let's look at his uh, response in 22 and 23, and we'll de read these responsibly, and I'll go first again. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? So this is our, our key verse. Moses responds to the challenge he's facing by pouring out his heart to God. And he wants to know two things here. He wants to know, God, what are you doing? And he wants to know, why are you doing this? And isn't this what we desire to know when we face challenges too? What are you doing, God? Why are you doing this? Here we can learn from Moses that we can pour out our heart to God. We can be honest with our God. If we're confused, he'll listen. If we don't know what's, what he's doing, we can ask him. What a God we have that he cares enough to listen to us and to help us when we're up against a life challenge. Let's look at God's response. We're going to read 6, 1 through 5. We'll go responsibly again. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I'll do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand you'll send them out, with a strong hand you'll drive them out of his land. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. So God hears Moses. And he tells him that he also hears the groans of the people. And he lets Moses know that he's been listening. And he tells Moses he has remembered the covenant. The covenant. Moses wanted to know what's happening. 
What is happening is the Lord is listening and he'll deliver his people. And why are these things happening? It's so God can keep his covenant. Moses' challenge was to confront Pharaoh and then the Israelites. His relationship with God is personal. And his response is to pray. And then he receives God's direction and he gets to participate in God's work. Let's read Matthew 26, 36 through 39 responsibly. I'll go first. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. So when Jesus faces a challenge, he responds just like Moses does, right? He fell on his face and he prayed. And he prayed, not as I will, but as you will. So we can see, uh, we can learn from Moses and we can learn from Jesus that when we're faced with a challenge, that we can cry out to our God and our God will listen. A couple years ago, uh, I I basically had a uh, a nervous breakdown. I was so filled with anxiety about changing jobs so much, and about another job opportunity that I wanted to take, but and I thought was good, but it wasn't God's time. And this made me so. Uh, just anxious and conflicted that I couldn't sleep at night. And when I would lay down, I would wake up and I would go, <gasps> like, really loud. And I didn't want my family to hear this. So I slept in my car. And I slept in my car for weeks. And I rolled the windows up and I closed the garage door and I closed the door to the garage so that no one could see what was going on. And of course I prayed to God, right? I said, God help me, God help me, God help me. I'd wake up and I'd say, Jesus, help me. Why am I going through this? But I, I, got, I got worse, like I felt worse, I felt more pressure and I didn't know what to do. And I talked to Pastor John about this. Do you remember Pastor John? And he told me that uh, in this situation that I don't trust that God has the best thing in mind for me. I trust myself. And because I trust myself, only, then all my burdens were on me. And in a way, I was, uh, I wasn't expecting this response from talking to Pastor John because I was having a lot of trouble, but I kind of got rebuked in this situation. And I could see that why I was getting worse in this situation wasn't because I was praying. It was really how I was praying. I wasn't praying with a believing heart. I was just kind of screaming because I wanted to feel better. And I also didn't pray with a clear conscience before God because I only trusted m myself. I didn't trust God. And then this needs to be cleared away, that I could repent before God, clear my conscience so that I could pray to him with my heart 
and pray to him with belief and then receive his direction in this situation. And it wasn't until then that I could sleep normally, stop going in my car and just say, I know I have this great job opportunity, but this is not the time that God has for me in this job. And so I declined that, that job offer and I felt better. And I'll give you a little bit of background on this too. I was working for this small Korean Christian company, which was very interesting because when they found out that I go to a kind of small Korean Christian church, they're like, yeah, right. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, for real. And what was happening in this company was they were launching a brand new product. And I was very, very deep in launching this product. And it was going to really change the way that this company operates. They were a hardware company. They sold imaging devices. They wanted to transfer over to being a software company. So there's all these plans. New product. How do we reach people? How do we actually sell it? How do we price it? How do we position it? How do we promote this? How do we promote this product? So I was, there's only really like one person doing this. There was another person on the team, but I was the one planning all this. So if I quit right beforehand, it's kind of like, man, all this stuff is just going to get pushed maybe like a year later until someone else comes in and, and can like take over. So I didn't feel right about like abandoning them during that time. So I, I stayed and we launched the product and we got everything going and we were selling the product and everything. And then I felt uh, when I prayed again is now a time when I could go back to that other company and say, you know, can I, can I come work for you? And they said, uh, I, I called them and months had passed and I asked them to delay this job for me for months and they did. And then when I asked them again, then they said, uh, we can work something out, right? So God had this plan for me, but I didn't know this plan. I wanted my, my plan. I wanted to go when I wanted to go, but God wanted me to go when he wanted me to go. And it wasn't until I could clear my heart and pray with a believing heart and pray with a believing conscience, conscience that God could give me his direction. And Moses is in a similar situation, right? He cries out to God. God gives him direction and he lets him into doing his work. So the question for us today is, how are we going to respond to challenges? We all didn't raise our hand in the beginning, right? We all confess that life isn't easy. So will you rely on yourself like Pharaoh? Is it going to be something like a mix, like the Israelites? Or will we be like Moses, who prayed to God in his time of challenge, and where God spoke to Moses and helped him participate in God's kingdom building work. Let's pray. Uh, dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much that we could gather here today. We all have challenges in our life, Lord. You know this very well. But Lord, we can see that you're a God who cares about our challenges, a God who will listen, a God will tell, who will tell us what's going on, and a God who will tell us why. We thank you so much that you're the God that you are. Help us, Lord, to be rightful servants, Lord, when we reach out to you. Help us to pray with a believing heart. Help us to pray with a clear conscience. And help us, Lord, that we wouldn't be a conflicted people like the Israelites or a hardened people like the Pharaoh, but help us rather instead to be like Moses and to be like Christ Jesus who prayed with their hearts, Lord, and were able to participate in your work. We thank you for this time to worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.